the Ferdinand Lands, probably the most feared snake in the tropics. And we got a big one. We're getting ready to pull her out, coming up. Fangs in your face. Subscribe now. What's happening, y'all? Willie Venom Central. We're in the Serpent Center today, and we're getting ready to put another massive snake on exhibit. Beautiful, massive exhibit behind me is going to be the new home for our massive Ferdy Lands. We've got a really big one. We've got the Bofrops Leia Chorus, which is the female. She is, she, she's over six foot and just big around. She is a deadly animal. She's gorgeous. This exhibit was sponsored by a dear friend of mine, um, Justin Lanasa, over at the Museum of the Bazaar in downtown Wilmington, North Carolina. If you ever vacation, if you ever go to Wilmington, you have to go check out the Museum of the Bazaar. Anything odd and unusual, this museum is really cool and it's a must see for the whole family. And he's actually even got like mirror mazes and stuff for the kids. And there's some interesting oddities that you just got to see in person. So if you're ever in Wilmington, North Carolina on vacation or business, go see my buddy Justin's place. I mean, he owns Hardware Tattoo, the baddest tattoo shops in North Carolina, and the Museum of the Bazaar. And you got to go check it out. It's really a fun place to see for the whole family. Justin and Erica and little Mimi, we love you, baby girl. Thank you so much for sponsoring the Florida Lance exhibit. Hey, we got some fangs in your face coming up. Stay to the end of the video because we're gonna put some uh, a compilation of some of the best fangs in your face strikes from this big girl and a few other Balfrop species. The term Ferdinand's, okay, it, it actually started with with a Frenchman that when he discovered the first Ferdinand's, which which was your Martinique lance head, and that is your Balfrop's lanceolatus. Okay. Ferdinand's, the head of the lance. It's it, it's the shape of this snake's head. And when you see their heads, they do look like, like a lance on the end of a spear. And also their velvety appearance. But that head is just so distinct, really gnarly looking. That's where the name originated from. But this name was adopted and kind of turned into a slang name for a lot of the species in the, in the Bothrops family. The Bothrops Leochorus, which we've got a massive one. The Bothrops Asper. The Bothrops Atrox, I mean, the Bothrops Columbiensis. There's so many different Bothrops, but they're all kind of referred to in their homeland as like the Ferd Lands. This lake, of course, somebody actually just hit this to it. As this one is cited as being one of the largest Bothrops lake, of course, in the world <laughs> ever recorded. It's a YouTuber, Venom Central, where it, it, it's got one that's over six foot. Like, she is a big girl. So it's just an interesting thing that, that, that we found kind of funny. We're going to talk a little bit about venom. The venom of this snake is deadly. The fang size on Bothrops is amazing. You got snakes with large fangs like Kaboons and Mansion Vipers have big fangs and that, but the Bothrops, they have daggers. They have fangs that can rival any other snake and can damn near keep right up there with a Gaboon or anything else. A Bushmaster and the way they're shaped, they're shaped like daggers and they can use them. We work with this species because of a medical significance that this species will have in the near future. A lot of your Bothrop species are very medically significant. I mean, your 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 Jararaca, your Jararaca Sioux. What a lot of people don't understand is that all of your A receptor drugs that are being used in different heart medications and blood thinners and, and, and there's, there's just an array of things being made that come from snake venom, that come from the Bothrop species. I mean, a medication that probably somebody in your family takes, Catapro, you know, it's it's created from the the Jararaca. You know, it's, it's created from a Bothrop species. And that's why we work with so many Bothrops because we want to be able to supply a lot of these labs and a lot of these institutions with species. 
and they need good captive born species. And I'll tell you, the damn Leocorus, there's not a lot of people breeding them. I mean, yeah, you can get them in, you know, Brazil and, and, and different, you know, the countries where they're, where, where they originate from, but here in the States, it's hard to get your hands on them. So, you know, we need people that can breed them and have to propagate them and supply the labs and institutions with the animals that they need so they can study the venom. This snake is more is responsible for more bites in the state of Bahia in Brazil than any other snake. Is is this fertile lance, the damn Bafon Play of course. I call them red line. That means it's it's a snake that you don't fool with. You gotta you gotta have a skill set, you gotta be very careful dealing with these animals. These are not pets, these are dangerous animals. All of your bothrops are, they're all red line snakes. And if you don't know what you're doing with them, this is not one that you fool with. Okay, I've been doing this many years and I have a lot of a lot of experience with bothrops. We breed a lot of bothrops that go to a lot of other institutions. Okay, so we're gonna get right at it and pull this big girl out and get her in her new exhibit. Right, where are you at, big girl? See, and just basic procedures. Anytime you're lifting something up, I always use my lid as like a little shield in case that snake is crawled up here and it takes a poke and be coming up. You know, I you'll see me spin my hands around like this. And it's because I'm OCD, I want that snake in a certain position where I'm gonna slide my hook in there and kind of slide it under her in the right spot. Cause she's heavy and she's very big, okay? And I always try to get my hook somewhat mid-body where I can kind of hang her over the can a little bit. This is just one snake that you don't fool with. safe zone. Oh, she is grabbing. She is really heavy right now. But that is one big lay of course. Biggest one on Wikipedia. <laughs> All right, big girl. We're going to let her kind of sit on top of the can just a little bit. Why don't you position her like so. I can get my hand up under her like this and support her weight a little bit. But that is a big, big fertile lance. Look at the head on that thing. That's why we call them fertile lance. That thing's shaped just like an arrowhead or a lance. All right, here we go. That big girl there just slide right into her new spacious exhibit. And then we'll pull the camera down and, oh yeah, she's gonna go buck wild in there. We'll pull the camera down and get some nice footage of her in her new exhibit. No matter what you're doing, the most important thing when you're handling an animal like this is safety. I mean, if it takes me five minutes to get that snake in the right position, that's how long it's going to take me. Because I'm not going to put my life at risk. I'm not going to put my wife at risk. I'm not going to put the public at risk, anybody at risk doing a video handling a snake foolishly it's just it's senseless you know and the guys that are doing that stuff need to stop it <laughs> because the facts are sooner or later somebody's gonna get hurt you know so it's time to all start being a little more responsible with your handling skills let's take a good look at this big girl well now that we got her in the exhibit we can get a better look at her and she'll crawl around in there for a day or two and find out where she's comfortable and where she wants to be. But she has got a beautiful exhibit to live in now. And she's got a little basking spot back there. And I keep the basking spot on the lay of course at about 82. They tend to like it a little bit cooler and they do a little better on the cooler side. And the cool end always stays at about 75 to 77 degrees. I found that a lot of the Bothrop species, they prefer it a little bit on the cooler side. They're a little more like Bushmasters. They like it a little cooler. And we've had this snake for several years now and she's thriving at them temperatures. Reproducing, thriving, doing very, very well. And all joking aside, when we say world's largest bothrops and world's largest fur glands, this, this snake is probably one of the biggest Laocorus on record. Um, I've seen many in my years in this 
field and never seen one quite this big. And she's getting bigger. She just grows constantly. In my opinion, the largest out of all of the Fertilance, out of all of the Bothrop species, is definitely the Bothrop's Asper, also known as a Terciopello. I've seen eight, nine footers, and they were pretty common. And the Repa collection, Dean had nine footers, and it was like no big deal. They were just that big. The females were that big. Males do not get as large as females. Females get massive. Same thing with the Laocorus. We've got a male, and he looks like a baby next to her. But we've had some big, big Bothrops Asper in the past, and that's probably the largest out of all of the Bothrops species is the, the Bothrops Asper, the Terciopello. Also, the Lanceolatus gets large. Lanceolatus have been known to reach seven, eight foot for the female, and males average anywhere from three to four foot. Huge venom glands, big delivery system, massive yield. They put out a lot of venom. And we've been very successful breeding a lot of Bothrop species. But this big girl, she's probably going to give birth here in the next month or two. And we're very excited about that. It's a very important animal that we definitely need to reproduce. And it would be kind of neat to have her have babies in this exhibit and be able to film it. Hey, we've got some fierce fangs in your face, fur to land style, coming up. Fangs in your face. And even though they're a pig viper and they're working on a heat signature, they still are very strong sight hunters. And, oh, okay, there you go. Oh, look at the blood everywhere. Look at the blood everywhere, just from one bite. Oh, she's coming in hot. <laughs> oh, big bite! Look at the venom on this rat. Look at that, just streaming. Let's get her locked down to this rat. She needs to pick up a big heat signature. Here she comes! Oh! <laughs> that is a big old Bothrop Slayer Chorus. The white tailed lance head. And look at the blood already. <laughs> Let's go ahead and line up a strike for her and she is ready for a feed. She's Oh, there you go. Ho oh, ho, big bite. She lit it up. Oh, there 
There you go! Alright, back it up, big mama. Come on, girl, there's a nice hot rat for you. She banged it. For the lance, this is the buff rock play, of course. <laughs> She come out and just put some fangs in it. Let's give her a little tap there. <laughs> there you go, girl. She never misses a meal. Oh, there you go. He's a little breeder. He's a he's a good male. That's the Bafra Play of Chorus. Hey, so a big, big thank you to my brother Justin Lanasa and family for sponsoring the Ferdinand Lance exhibit. The Gaboons need needed an exhibit sponsor. And it's gonna be the big double side exhibit. It's 10 foot. It's beautiful. It, and it needs a sponsorship. So if you're interested, hit us in the link down there, email us, and we'll fill you in. Um you get a lot of perks with a sponsorship, and you can email us and we'll fill you in on all that. If you're new to the channel, hit that be logo thing and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out at Venom Central and the Serpent Center coming soon. This is Willie from Venom Central. We're checking out. Later.